personal freedom, moving your story towards self-acceptance. I'll kind of explain what that means as we go along. So first of all, I want to define what personal freedom means. Personal freedom, actually, I thought of this definition literally like this morning. I was like just walking around my house and I was like, what, what is personal freedom? How, what, how do I even bring that about? So for me, what I come, came up with was it's living in accordance with how you want to live without drawing or attributing any, to any unnecessary self-limiting, self-limiting boundaries. So what does that mean to you? Think about it for a second. So my personal story, how I kind of came into this realm of personal freedom, was, well, I used to be a very, very anxious child. I used to be very quiet. Uh, I used to look like this and have a bowl cut. (laughs) Uh, And really, like, in terms of what I was surrounded around, it wasn't the most supportive environment. So it took me a really long time to understand what that meant. But it also really put me in a place where I was very negative about myself. And this is me a little bit cuter in a picture, but I had a lot of self-limiting beliefs. I had a lot of negative thought tendencies, and I had a lot of anxiety that really held me down and really didn't allow me to go any further. Luckily for me, I don't know why this was. It was just my own personal view of things was I always wanted to learn. I always wanted to exceed. I always wanted to excel. And I never stopped myself from doing that because that's what kept me going. No matter what I believed about myself, no matter what I said to myself, no matter what anybody else said to me, I knew I I was still directed and I was still going somewhere. So that's kind of my background, where I come from. So what I want to talk about today is those negative self-beliefs because those are the real monsters. They show up in so many different ways. And so we're, I'm going to do a little bit of a psychology lesson, lesson here of really where do these you know, beliefs come from and how they manifest and how they grow to become these patterns that we get stagnant in and exhibit in ourselves. These are mental feedback loops. So just a little bit of psychology here. So you have your initial belief. This is your perspective. This is a story you tell yourself. This is what you think you are. That belief is get, gets triggered by an event. And as that event triggers you, you come to an emotional response. So you respond, something happens. Let's say, uh, say, say you're talking to somebody and they say, shut up. And you believe, oh my God, why should I have been talking? You start to feel sad about yourself. You start to feel, oh my God, what have I done? And then you exhibit a behavior, which is withdrawing or walking away. And then that kind of leads you back into your belief where you believe you shouldn't be talking. Oh my God, why should I talk? I have nothing important to say. And that triggers more emotional response, which triggers more behavior and so on. So you come into this negative mental feedback loop. Where does this come from? It comes from your environment. It's conditioning. Just like Pavlov's dogs with his saliva and his meat and blah, blah, blah. It's the same exact thing. And this happens for everything. This happens for all the stories you tell yourself. This happens for all your fears. This happens for everything that you believe about yourself. These come from your environment. And as you establish these beliefs, they transfer more into your emotional response, which transfers more into your behavior. And then they loop around until you're going down, down, down. And then that creates more anxiety. That creates more depression. And that's something I've personally suffered through as well. And it's taken me a long time to really understand and get over it. And that's why I wanted to do this talk today. So... Here's what happens. As you go through these feedback loops, you develop momentum. You develop a need to go through these mental patterns. And the deeper you go into them, the deeper you get stuck in them. But what to do? What do you do about that? (laughs) Are we going to sit here and cry? We can. It can help. But here's what I want to do today. I want to help you figure out just some of the tools that I've used in my life to get over these negative mental feedback loops because there's something that can be really hard to face but in essence they are faceable and they you you can overcome them it's just what you put into it so the first tool i'll be going through is take action the second one is disassociate from your thoughts and third deal with your shit that's one of the most important ones So the first one, take action. 
So here's the thing about your negative mental feedback loops. Because you have these beliefs, you'll exhibit these emotional responses and you'll exhibit the same type of behaviors. When you take action, that makes you, and you get results that aren't in line with your beliefs, you start to question your own beliefs. It gives you a reason to, and that's really what you need. And as you get this reason to question your beliefs through taking action, you start to build this momentum of another upward spiral, spiral rather than a downward spiral. And for example, I used to have a lot of social anxiety. To get up on this floor and stage and to be able to talk like this, I would have never been able to do it. I would have, even a lot of the girls in the room, I would have been so afraid to talk to you. Like, it would have been horrendous for me to do that. But here's what I did. In my own story, I decided that I don't want to be stuck in that place. I want to take action. What did I start to do? I started to take action by saying hi to people, by talking to people, whether it's the people giving me food, whether it's the people just anywhere. Even if it's a small amount of action, even if you can lean just a bit over your edge, that is so much more valuable than trying to jump into a party or something and then trying to make yourself be happy. Just leaning over that edge can make the biggest difference to how you perceive yourself. So take that step. And just so you know, failing is okay. Yes, I have been completely turned down by girls before, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Not everybody's going to like you, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And this is just through social anxiety, but this could be through anything, through any self-belief. So whether it's, you know, you're starting a new sport, whether it's, I don't know, you're, you're getting a dog or having a child. Yeah, nothing is going to be perfect. It's okay to fail. You just have to take that action and give yourself a reason to believe otherwise of what you already believe. The next step, disassociate from your thoughts. Your mind is naturally a reactive tool. Your mind will naturally spit out thoughts. That's what it's meant to do. Evolutionarily speaking, your mind is there, or your brain, whatever, whatever you want to call it, your amygdala, however you want to define it. It is something that continually wants to spit out things due to your context, from your environment. It will try to keep you from getting eaten. That's what the mind naturally does. And through that, now the mind is, because there's no more tigers, there's no more like elephants trying to step on you, then the mind naturally just comes up with all these thoughts it possibly can to try to keep you in a place that's safe and comfortable. But here's the thing. This can actually stop you from growing. And as a person, you want to be continually growing because if you stop growing, you're going to work backwards. So as you learn to deal with your thoughts and deal with these negative mental feedback loops and see them for what they are, you can actually respond to them differently. You can accept them or you can reject them. It takes work. But you can. And one of the best ways to do that is journaling. Get your th- all of your thoughts and put them on a piece of paper. As soon as you put them on a piece of paper, then you can take that step back and be like, are these even real? Are these even worries that I'm thinking about something worth thinking about? You can start to rationalize them. You can start to see them for what they are. And once your brain is on that piece of paper, it becomes much easier to deal with. And I'm not saying that it's going to happen right away but take that step to actually write those thoughts down because it can make a huge difference. So here's the thing. Yes, you can disassociate from your thoughts, but you still have to deal with your emotions. And here's the thing about your emotions. Your emotions need attention. Your emotions are a bunch of crying babies. If you want to put that visual in your head, that's what they really are. They are children. Your emotions don't know how to handle themselves. You have to be the parent. You have to learn to handle them. And through that, they need attention. You need to validate them. You need to acknowledge them. How do you take care of a crying child? You take care of it by saying, hey child, I'm here, you're okay, let me get you a bottle, you're good. Don't, don't do that. Don't actually do that with a child. Um, <laughs> but as soon as you start to acknowledge your emotions, you can find to be like, I feel sad. I feel sad about this and this sucks. Saying that even can put you in this place where you can take a step back and really look at it for what it is. And as soon as you start to acknowledge it, you can start to accept that you feel that way. And as you go into accepting it, you can start to understand it. And that's the key. 